Hello everyone, my name is Pascal Bouton and I'm a head of collection of the FPFL library. I'm with you today for a special coffee lecture entitled Five Things You Should Know About Infoscience. For this coffee lecture, our learning objectives will be to identify the role of Infoscience at EPFL and its place in the global open science landscape, to get an overview of the variety of its contents and to discover what services it can provide you as a member of the EPFL community. InfoScience is available at http colon double slash infoscience.epfl.ch. Since 2004, it is the EPFL institutional repository solution for academic output and scholarly content. It gathers the EPFL community's research and scholarly output and disseminates them as widely as possible. It allows legal access to the full text of many reference publications according to open access principles and in compliance with EPFL open access policy and funders' requirements. For all these reasons, InfoScience plays a key role in EPFL commitment toward open science and specifically open access by ensuring that scholarly and research results produced by EPFL researchers, teachers, and students are made available around the world. InfoScience aims at hosting all types of scientific and scholarly output according to the three EPFL missions, teaching, research, and innovation. As an EPFL community member, whether you are a researcher, a teacher, or a student, you may deposit in particular published literature, like journal articles and book chapters, and unpublished materials, what we call grey literature, such as theses and technical reports. Beside records, you may upload publication full text with no format restrictions, PDF, PPT, image, video, and so on. At the moment, more than 160,000 documents are referenced in InfoScience. A wide variety of content types is represented. You will find articles, conference papers, and theses in the top three, then student projects, reports, presentation and talks, book chapters, reviews, posters, patents, and standards, and so forth. For the third point, I would like to come back to something that was presented in the last EPFL Library Coffee Lectures about green open access. Many funding agencies like SNSF or EU for Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe require that the publications that are the result of a finance project should be made open access. <clears throat> you can easily fulfill those mandates through a green way to open access that is to say, by self-archiving your articles in InfoScience. It's a free of charge way of complying with your funder's requirement. As you know, green open access is governed by conditions set by the publisher, which version of the paper you are allowed to self-archive and if an embargo applies. In InfoScience, you are allowed to share the accepted version of your article, the one which is available after proof peer review, but prior to any production steps, usually after an embargo. And you can possibly share the published version if you publish in open access, either in a fully gold open access journal or in a hybrid journal. What I would like to underline here is that you can disseminate through InfoScience one or more of the free versions of the paper. You can also specify the version of your full text and set an embargo period before releasing the full text in open access. You probably ask yourself at this moment, why choose an InfoScience instead of my personal web page or an academic social network to share my productions? In fact, InfoScience is fully interoperable, which means that it follows the international technical protocols and standards for scientific communication. That enables you to open up contents that may otherwise be locked behind paywalls or in local silos. After your submission, EPFL librarian perform a formal bibliogra bibliographic check in order to facilitate indexation from external sources. Your papers will then rank on Google Scholar and other search engines, improving your research visibility and citability. 
Thanks to interoperability, InfoScience contents can also be harvested by other scientific platforms. For example, OpenAir, the European Open Science Infrastructure, or the Bibliothèque Nationale Suisse. As far as possible, EPFL library tries to alleviate researchers' workload through automated record import and export features. Beside manual deposits, InfoScience records are imported from trusted sources. For example, thesis come from IS Academia, and during the integration step, a DOI owned by EPFL is systematically attributed to them by the library. Concerning patterns, informations are provided by a specialized database called ESPASnet. Regarding articles, most of them come from the web of science. In this case, EPFL researchers and authors just have to validate the affiliation to their lab. As explained before, InfoScience acts itself as a trusted source for applications beyond EPFL, like Google Scholar and OpenAir. At EPFL, InfoScience's use is multiple. It serves as a basis for the preparation of annual faculty's reports. It also allows to create customized publication lists to dynamically feed the publication tab of personal EPFL profile and lab web pages. Last but not least, InfoScience provides every user a web API to allow the reuse of its data and metadata. At the moment, for example, this interface provides content for EPFL graph and ENAC Affinity Map that help visualizing links among labs and researchers. At the library, a dedicated team takes care of your contents. You can contact us through our help desk for copyright issues, metadata, quality check, DOI attribution, etc. You just have to send an email to infoscience at epfl.ch. For frequently asked questions, a knowledge base is available online. For example, how to create a record or how to manage file attachments. You will be required to log in with your EPFL account to access it. Library also offers you short training session, 20 minutes, followed by a workshop during which you can practice with our support. Next topics will be how to add publications and how to create publication lists. They will take place on the 1st and the 5th of April 2022. Announcements will be available on the EPFL Memento if you are interested in and want to register. That's it for my presentation. I would like to thank my colleagues, Alessandra, Georges, and Manon for their suggestions and feedback. Now the floor is yours if you have any questions. We will be glad to answer you.